Howdy folks and welcome back to Apron Strings. If this is your first time here, my name is Gay and I'm so glad to have you here. And if you're one of my regular visitors, I'm glad you're here too. I see some familiar faces up here around the butcher block. I've been gone about a week, but let me tell y'all what, this old lady has been working, working, working. You know, I showed y'all the backyard where it was grown up from where I had the pea gravel with my garden over to my sitting area. I have got all of that cleaned up, all of the everything pulled up out of the way, ready to put pea gravel down. That was, I worked eight solid hours out in the um, garden. And I did that Sunday. Uh, Troy's had COVID again. So we've been a little bit trying to be careful and not expose anybody. It's this strand is like a bad cold with a huge sinus infection involved or a lot case of the flu. He has had fever once or twice, but um, nothing major that we have to be so careful with him. So I've kind of been sidelined for a week or so with that. So while I had to stay home, and I know I needed to do videos, but y'all, I'm having to juggle everything and I'm sorry that I haven't been here. I'll do better as soon as I can. But I'll be here occasionally, at least once a week, I hope. Maybe maybe I can get back on my Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But anyway, I got all of that area cleaned out. And then Troy was able, I told y'all, he can sit and do anything just about it. So he climbed up on Curly Sue, which is the little small tractor that was bought to be my little tractor, but he took a liking to it, and that little stinker liked him. So he drives it more than I do, but it has a little front end loader on it. So I raked all the leaves, and those white oak trees make lots of huge dead leaves. I raked all of those leaves and would scoop them up into the bucket, and he would go haul them to the compost pile on the back acreage back there and come back and get another load, y'all. I was so tired. Well, I bet you I hauled, I loaded two, uh, 20 buckets of those leaves. But I wouldn't stop till I finished because I knew if I stopped. Now, when he would go to dump, I'd go sit down in front of the little fan and cool off a little bit. My face was as red as a cherry. But anyhow, that's what I've been doing. I've been getting all this cleaned up out back. And I'm going to give you all a tour of the gardens looking beautiful. The tomato plants are growing. I'm going to have squash to pick in a day or two. And then I cleaned all the front porch and I've got all the plants from the funeral from Richard out there and they're growing and looking pretty and it makes my front porch look very inviting. I'm going to show you all the front porch when I do the, the garden one, but I have another surprise coming up. I got a green stalk, which is a vertical garden, and I'm going to uh, video the unboxing. Happy Mother's Day. I'm going to video the unboxing and... Uh, the filling it, and I'm fill, I'm going to fill it with strawberry plants. So y'all need to be watching for that video. It'll probably be the next one that comes out. But anyhow, thank you for being faithful subscribers and watching for another video, for checking on us. It's been it's been a little uncomfortable not knowing what this. We went to a, a big service at church, and a bunch of people from church came down with COVID from that service. So I guess somebody there had it. I don't know. It hasn't been life-threatening for Troy, but I always worry about stuff like that with his lungs like they are. Anyway, I'm going to make something today that I made years ago as a cake, but I'm going to do it in a cupcake pants, and guess what? It's pineapple upside-down cake done in the pants, and I have six or eight cans of crushed pineapple, six or eight cans of tidbits, and a bunch of chunks, not one can of sliced pineapple. But I'm gonna do this with crushed pineapple and see if it'll stick together and work. And we'll see how you make do when you don't have what you're supposed to have because I done had everything out, ran out there to get my can of pineapple slices and I didn't have any. So anyhow, we're gonna get over here to the butcher block. I've got the oven heated to 350 and we're gonna get the, I've got everything together and I'll tell y'all what I'm doing. I'm going to get you over here a little closer. And we're going to get these muffins in the oven and see how they pop out of that pan with crushed pineapple at the top instead of pineapple slices. The original recipe, you cut all of the pineapple slices in fourths and you put two of them on the top because a whole one wouldn't fit in the muffin tin. So I'm going to spray my muffin tin right quick with some uh, kitchen spray, I call it. It's 
whatever you call it, I don't know. People have laughed at me for saying kitchen spray, but that's what I call it. Let me wipe it off so maybe it won't mess up the top of my enamel cookie sheets. I love these. It's cookies. Okay, I'm going to come tilt the camera down where y'all can just see what I'm doing. You won't see me, but you'll see that what I'm doing real good, and we'll get it made. It takes a box of cake mix, three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar, uh, two-thirds of a cup of melted butter, the maraschino cherries, three eggs, a half a cup of oil, the juice reserved from the pineapple, and uh, I think that's it. So we're fixing to get going. I'm going to mix my brown sugar in with my butter, which is what it said to do. That's going to go in directly. Sometimes my brown sugar, I don't have one of those little sugar discs in there to keep it soft. Sometimes it gets a little bit knotted up looped up. Okay. I'm going to get that to lay that out instead of making such a huge mess. I better go get an apron now and I'll be right back. Okay, let me get my cake mix open. And I have found if you have a cake mix that's outdated, um, most of the time if you'll just add you a three-fourths of a teaspoon of baking powders, it'll go ahead and rise just perfectly well. Now I have um, whipped my eggs a little bit. I'm going to mix this up some. It And I need to add um, a half a cup of oil, three beaten eggs. Get that out of my way. I need the juice from the pineapple. And I need to mix all of that up. Y'all like desserts? This will be good because it's going to be finger food, ready for everybody to just pick them up a piece and not have to cut it and have a mess. Sometimes that gets a little bit... I could put it in muffin tins, I guess. Muffin papers, but I think I'm just going to put it in the pan. It didn't say how much pineapple juice, and surely that... Um, Crush didn't have more juice than the other. We're going to see. I hope it works. This may be a failure. If it is, I'm going to be honest about it. Now, what we have to do first is... We're going to put one and a half teaspoons of this brown sugar mixture in each cup and I've got 24 cups here actually I'm putting two teaspoons just a little bit extra you know what it's not two teaspoons this is a half of a tablespoon, which is one and a half teaspoons. That's perfect. Okay, get the other one done. You know, if I'd gone to the store after pineapple slices and there wasn't any, and I was real hungry with this for this. I just went ahead and done what I just now am trying to do. I'd have made do with what I had. I'm going to have enough of that for something else. But it won't go to waste. I'll use it for something. Now here's going to be the tricky part. i got to put some of this crushed pineapple around on there. You 
Isn't that funny? You just do what you have to, folks. And my hands work a lot better than a teaspoon would. I think this will work just fine. It just won't look the same, you know, without the pineapple with a hole in the middle. Because I'm going to put the cherry on it, too. you got to have that. Troy has been sitting out there for the longest, cleaning our ice machine. A little light comes on and tells you when to clean it. And, uh... I'm going to tell you what, I love that ice baker. We use the fire out of it. So much that, well, I got that when I redid the kitchen. And, um, uh, my kids want one. They didn't, we didn't have that when they was growing up. All right, let me show y'all what it looks like. Well, I'm adding a little bit more here and there. Cause can. Troy has coughed and coughed and coughed with this, but everybody that's had it says it's like a huge sinus infection. In fact, a friend of mine went to the doctor. That's why Troy didn't go for one thing. It scares you not knowing what they might would decide to do with his condition like it is. But she went to the doctor and they didn't even give her antibiotics. They told her to keep using her nose spray, take Tylenol for fever, and um, ride it out. That was their words. So, he didn't even go, but like I said, I'm a little bit afraid of doing any of that in him. i got to work these down in there because I don't have an actual hole to deal with can see some cherry coke in somebody's future because I saved the cherry juice. You know, I don't think I want cherry tea, and y'all know tea's my thing, so. You know what? I'm supposed to do 24 of these. And here I am with 12 muffin tins ready. I'll go ahead and do these, and then I'll do the rest of them. Let's see what we got going. It says a fourth of a cup of the dough on the top of that. You cook them about 20 minutes at 350. I had a couple of Mexican dishes that I'm going to do too. Got a neat recipe for making some enchilada sauce, and I'm going to be doing that, and then I'll be using it to make a couple of different recipes. Got a lot of ideas coming up. I'm just running in slow gear right now. Back in there. Okay, I'm gonna get another thing of uh, muffin, another muffin tin ready. I'm gonna get this in the oven for 20 minutes and I'll bring y'all back and show you when it's finished. Decided to do something a little different. I put uh, my brown sugar and butter in the bottom of this small loaf pan and then I sprinkled what I had left of the uh, pineapple over it, put some cherries around in it. I can't really turn it up where you can see real well because it'll run everywhere, but there it is. And I'm just going to see how it cooks up in this little loaf pan. I'll just put my dough on the top and we'll see. None of it may not work, folks. It's what happens when you don't check everything before you get started and you're out of something. Let's come out, I'll put this in because it's going to need to cook a little bit longer than they do. And I'll bring y'all back. In 20 minutes, they look pretty. If they'll just come out with some goodie on the top, I'll be perfectly happy. Now I'm going to put this little loaf in there for about 
45 minutes. We'll see how it does. Let me set my timer. I'm going to let these cool just for a little bit and then I'll uh, put them out on the cookie sheet and show y'all what they look like. I mean, on the Okay, they came out. I plopped it over and they came out. A little bit of the crushed pineapple did stay in the bottom of the muffin tins. If I had had the slices, everything would have been perfect. So I've got the little loaf in the oven and I will wait until I get it out and we'll see how it does and then uh, I'll taste of it. Okay, the muffins look pretty good. And the little cake looks pretty good. It looks really juicy. Now, I didn't have um, a rectangle pan, so that's a paper plate, and it's autumn, but it'll still taste good. So I just wanted to show y'all. Okay, y'all, we've got us a good dessert for supper or whatever. And you see, everybody has problems sometimes where you have to just make do. But this has also made me realize, what if I went to my pantry and I didn't have something that was real important? You just have to learn how to grab something else and make up the difference. So don't forget when you go to the store, try to get one extra of something that you use a lot but you're not really needing. And then you will that's how you will stock up and have some extras. Things aren't looking too good, and I'm not a doomsday prophet, but I don't think it's going to get a lot better. So while you can and the resources are available, you might ought to be getting you a little bit of extra stuff and putting it in your pantry. Now, I've told you before, and I'm going to hop up on this soapbox again. Don't get English peas because they're five cans for a dollar if y'all hate English peas. That's wasting your money. I don't care how cheap it is. Spend your money on something that your family loves, will eat, enjoys, but try to think of the things that they love, eat, and will enjoy that are the most filling for them. Say things did get really tough. Find out what they'll eat that will fill their stomach and stay with them. Rice is very filling. Beans of any kind, peas, um, your grains, your oatmeal, your grits, your um, all of that. Think about things like that that would make them feel full for longer. Don't forget your seasonings. You're gonna need salt, pepper, sugar. I always have garlic and onion powder and if you can get you some chili powder you can just about cook anything with just those seasonings. Don't forget your baking soda and baking powders, flour and cornmeal, powdered milk, powdered buttermilk. Those are some things that would be wise to try to get just in case. Uh, powdered eggs if you can find them. Now I'm freeze drying me some eggs so I'm gonna have eggs because I've got chickens too. But just in case, everybody don't have a freeze dryer, but you can buy powdered eggs. So think about that. Think about what you're going to need. If y'all like cornbread, you're going to need flour, cornmeal, bacon powder, some milk and some eggs, salt and garlic and onion powder, a little bit of sugar. Think about what you like to eat and what it's going to take to <coughs> cook it. Your Wesson oil or your cooking oil. I buy the store brand most of the time. Crisco, your solid lard. The things that you might need, y'all, I'm, I'm urging you, stock your pantry, okay? And while you're stocking it, don't forget to be talking to the good Lord. He controls everything, and he, um, he can open up a supply chain if he wants to. He can close it down if he wants to. In the Bible, he let the sun stand still so Joshua could finish fighting a battle. He controls everything. He may have ordained all of this because it's headed toward the end time. I don't know. But uh, talk to him. Make sure you're on the right team. Because there was a lady in the Bible, and when the prophet or the preacher came to her house and told her to make him a little cake, she said, I only have enough left for one for me and my boy, and then we're going to die. I got enough oil and enough meal. And he said, well, make mine first. So she was obedient, and she did, and guess what? Every time she went back to her cruise of oil, there was just enough to make another cake. And when she went back to her meal barrel, there was just enough to make another cake. 
Now, if you want your oil and your meal to last, do your part and have some to start with for the Lord to stretch when it gets thin. But I do believe he'll take care of us. There was another time when Elijah was running from Jezebel and he was down by the creek hiding. And you know what? God sent the ravens, brought food to him. Now, I heard one preacher say, that raven just went right by the king's table and brought him a big old steak. I don't know what the ravens fed Elijah, but they fed him. So if you'll do your part and keep your relationship with the good Lord, you one of his kids, you can ask him to take care of you in faith that he's going to do it. I hope y'all have a blessed week. I'm, I've got a busy week, a lot of stuff on my list. I'm going to try to come back with some more videos. But y'all, if I'm absent a few days, just know that I'm here. I'm trying to get everything done at home to where I can get back on a regular schedule. But there's some things that you got to get done you can't put off. And so I'm trying to prioritize and get my home stuff done. Then I'll get back on more videos. i got some good ones coming up. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. And I will talk to you again shortly.